I'm going to the three worst stadiums in the NFL to see just how bad they really are. And at the end, I'll rank each one to see which, if any, are truly the worst. Starting in Washington, D.C. at the commander's own FedEx field. According to Charles D., walking through the massive, near-endless parking lots is reminiscent of the Soviet Union. Are you ready to cross the Soviet Union parking lots, Liz? I'll take that as a yes. Let's go. But I kind of have to disagree because the walk was only about five minutes. There's plenty of parking and we even met some awesome tailgaters on the way. Hold on, give me a camera. Hold on, give me a good shot. I got to say, it's not exactly like the Soviet Union. Not that I have a ton of experience there. Maybe Charles D does. But what makes a stadium bad and why am I even choosing these three stadiums? According to this athletic article, 31 NFL writers ranked every stadium and then gave a top and bottom five. It looks like the Commanders had a, quote, dominant last place finish. Now, this feels kind of obvious, but the other two we're going to visit will definitely surprise you. Getting to our seats was a nightmare. We walked up four levels of ramps, no escalators. What a joke of a venue. And after weaving through the crowds, which were quite minimal, the Commanders aren't very good this year. We finally arrived at our tunnel. No smoking or standing. We're breaking the rules. All rule breaking aside, we finally found our spot. We got seats 23. 22, these two seats. And if we were right here, we would win a prize. I will say the seats are wet, not wiped down. It's bad service. All jokes aside, because obviously I know they're not going to wipe down every seat. There were several reviews talking about poles and obstructions in the way. Seats were purchased online and did not show any obstruction. In all caps, this is fraud. But I really didn't have to deal with that. And we even had perfect sight lines to Jalen Ramsey and Tyreek Hill warming up. And my girlfriend's got a soft spot for Mike McDaniel. So I'll give the seating an 8 out of 10, but the location isn't as simple. We're in Washington, D.C., which is awesome. But when it comes to the actual game, you're left driving for. 45 minutes outside the city, weaving through random neighborhoods just to arrive at a stadium with nothing really to do outside of it. Unfortunately, I'd have to give the location a 4 out of 10, only being carried by the proximity to such a great city with so much to do in Washington, D.C. But we still have to rate the food, the team shop, and the atmosphere before leaving FedEx and heading to our next stadium. So first, we started with the team shop. Got a little Terry McLaurin here, fantasy legend. What do you think, good for the food that we're gonna eat later? It's my size. Honestly, they had a good variety of gear, but the prices were crazy high, even for an NFL stadium. So I'll give it a four out of 10. But now it's time for the food, a very important part of attending any NFL event. Can I have a chicken tenders and fries, a jumbo pretzel, and a souvenir soda, please? Very friendly. Or so I thought until I got confronted by some guy who said it was wildly inappropriate for me to be recording him. <laughs> Yeah, she's just recording a video for her. I was super nervous and doing my best to be as respectful as possible, but I get it. I wouldn't want to be recorded. It just, the encounter made me a little uncomfortable. But what's more important is how the food actually tastes. Pretzel test first. That is hard to mess up. This PA system is so loud. Which is funny because there were plenty of reviews bashing that too. But Vince G really went in on this review when he said the food was horrible. All of it. Not fit for my dog. I would be reported to PETA if I fed it to my dog. <laughs> Oh, as I'm sure you can tell, it's not a soft pretzel. It's like crunchy. Not good. Not good. Now we've got chicken guy. I'm still chewing this pretzel. Seasoned well, cooked to perfection. I give the chicken an 8 out of 10. Pretzel is a negative 4 out of 10. That is the worst soft pretzel I've ever had in my entire life. I'm still not sure how you miss so wildly on a soft pretzel, but we'll give the food review a 4. Now, the last thing to experience was the atmosphere. So, my girlfriend Liz and I finally got to relax and enjoy some football. The crowd was awesome, but unfortunately, that had very little to do with the Commanders and much more to do with the Dolphins fans that showed up in groves. Even funnier, the athletic article specifically called this out, and it turns out the only reason the game was sold out was because of the Dolphins fans in the first place. Also, the commanders seemingly forgot how to play football today because after seeing one commander's touchdown early, it was the Dolphins show from then on out. And we even got to see this hilarious roller coaster celebration. 
So after giving the atmosphere a 5 out of 10, mostly due to Dolphins fans, our total score for FedEx Field is 25 out of 50. But now we're off to our next stadium, which I was very surprised to see is actually the Miami Dolphins Hard Rock. Apparently, half of the ballots had the Dolphins home since 1987 in the bottom five of the NFL. Now this one's tricky, because not only are we going to an early game in Miami, but we'll be heading to our next stadium that very same day. So basically, everything has to go according to plan or we're gonna be in trouble. And the day we got there, it absolutely poured in Miami. So I was worried everything was gonna be soaked again, but we were in for a surprise. Oh, seats are not small at all. Seats are perfect. I'm very pleased with the quality of the seat. And look at the view. Look at the view. <laughs> So despite the tough reviews about the seats, the seats are kind of small, but I suppose that's standard at any stadium. I was happy with them, so I'll give the seating a 7 out of 10. The location, however, was a bit rougher because the stadium itself actually isn't in Miami. It's in this area called Miami Gardens, which is about a 45-minute drive from downtown, and there's really nothing else surrounding it. So I'm going to give the location a 4 because besides the game itself, there's really just nothing to do. Then we got to shop at the team store, which I was pretty impressed with. The pricing was really good, and I I got myself this nice hat. But now it's time to test out some of the food, which didn't have raving reviews. The food there was mid. We only had gotten the basics like burgers and fries. Okay, first things first, garlic fries. And then we'll get us some hot dogs and test those out. But as good as that's very garlicky. But that's what you're getting with garlic fries. Pretty good. I don't know, you try. It's like strong garlic, and it like goes away really fast. And it's not In this bag, we've got a cheese dog and a regular dog. So the cheese apparently doesn't come on the dog. I don't know what I was really expecting. Cheese on a hot dog. I'm from Chicago, we don't do that. I give it a four and a half out of 10. So maybe that person was right when she said the food was made. I think mid's probably a good word. Overall, I'd rate the team shop at a nine out of 10, but the food just about a six. Now for the best part though, we get to try out the atmosphere and watch some of the best players in the NFL play. But to my dismay, Tyreek Hill was injured and we didn't get to see him. But before getting started, of course, my girlfriend was just videotaping Mike McDaniel again. He's right there. <laughs> Swaggy. But hey, we made it on the Jumbotron. And it wasn't long until the Dolphins put up their first points of the game. And after a Jalen Waddle touchdown, I got to see my favorite celebration. And the Dolphins, as I'm sure you know, put on an absolute clinic. And then the Jets had to bring in their backup quarterback, Trevor Simeon, but this game was already over. Now, I love the atmosphere here. The fans were great. Everyone was engaged and cheering. I give this atmosphere a 9 out of 10. And while totaling up the score for Hard Rock Stadium, I gotta say I wasn't even surprised because I felt like this stadium didn't belong on this list to begin with. But now the pressure's on because we're actually going to the Jacksonville game this very same night. Meaning we have to get back to the hotel, grab our stuff, hop on a flight, check into our Airbnb, and make it to to the game in just a few hours. And the cherry on top was our Uber driver giving us a big warning about leaving. And there's no one to pick you up and it's very busy. And after just making it in the nick of time to Everbank Stadium, first we had to check out our seats and boy were they awesome. I'm easily giving the seating an eight out of 10. And the atmosphere was the best we've seen so far. I had the craziest video board I've ever seen. This thing was huge. Wow. And all this had me surprised to see Everbank Field even on this list so low. The athletic article said it has the generic feel of a stadium that's been plunked down in the suburbs. But I really didn't get that vibe. Because of its proximity to the river and downtown, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. And now it's time for some football. No! But right before halftime, after hurrying to the line, the Jags made a crucial mistake. So when he didn't get out of bounds, they couldn't get back to the line, scored zero points, and the fans were not happy. So far, so good, but now let's go try out the food, which there was one specific review that I wanted to put to the test. Mr. Chubby's Wings, apparently Craig F. got a burnt bun, so we're gonna give her a test. It was a little expensive, I'll give him that. $17 for a cheeseburger basket. Good presentation, good burger, I mean, yeah. It looks a little charred, I won't lie. We'll give it a, the old college try here. Not burnt, not bad. It's a stadium burger. 
I give it a 6.8 out of 10. I'm sorry your experience was bad, Craig F. But what does Liz think about this burger? A little dry. I would also probably say a 6.5. I said 6.8. Oh, 6.8. I'll say... <laughs> 6.5. Okay. So the food test was done, but the item shop I felt was kind of lacking. It was mostly just vendors on the side, and we may not have just been able to find the team store, but at the end of the day, wasn't too impressed. I'll give it a rating of four. And then Trevor Lawrence had his first of two fumbles this play, and things were not going well for the Jags. But despite what was happening on the field, the atmosphere was seriously a 10 out of 10. The fans were great. I had a blast. But then we hit a problem because leaving the stadium was a disaster. Just like our Uber driver warned us about earlier, we couldn't find a ride. And after well over an hour to just go a couple miles, we finally got home. Do I think it's the best stadium in the world? Probably not. But do I think it's like bottom three of the NFL when I'm a Bears fan and I know what Soldier Field looks like? Absolutely not. So after tallying up our final scores, FedEx was clearly the worst stadium, and I didn't think Hard Rock or Everbank even belonged on this list so low. Now, if you want me to visit the best stadiums, let me know in the comments down below, but otherwise, click this video here to see me play some Madden.